Hello people and welcome back to the channel. Today's tactic is a 4-1-3-2 heavily inspired by Marcelo Gachado. So it's not replication but what we have done is taken some of the key attacking principles and pull it into our own. This tactic in Football Manager was tested with Nottingham Forest where we scored plenty of goals, we smashed records, your strikers, well they are performing. <laughs> so in this video what we're going to do is break down the tactic, create the tactic, play a game to see how the tactic plays out and then look at the results at the end. If you are enjoying this type of content make sure you are subscribed to the channel, make sure you like this video, leave a comment, all of that will help but for now let's get stuck in. Marcelo Gachado has used a variety of systems, finding ways to adapt and keep his opponents guessing but the key attacking patterns are always visible and that's to create superiorities. River Plate's attacking shape resembles a 2-3-5 mostly or a 3-2-5. Gachado looks to dominate the central areas which is where they create overloads high and central with only the wing backs giving the side width. To create depth and play centrally, they will look to recycle the ball and invite the opposition to press looking to create gaps to play line breaking passes and get in between the lines. Not only do they look to play narrow but they are also very horizontally compact which helps the side prevent counter attacks when losing the ball. The attacking pro is that the team can create numerical superiorities that forces the opposition to react and allows Gachado's men to retain the possession well. And of course, with a heavy focus in the central areas, the opposition often give up their flanks leaving Gachado's fullbacks free in space and that leaves the opportunity for the ball to be played inside and then out to the three fullbacks. They then be able to put the ball into the box where River Plate always put numbers inside the box. When defending, Gachado's team will set out in a high press. One of the most common themes witnessed was that he asked his four highest players to be ready to pressure by funneling the play out wide. In the Argentine Premier Division, River lead the PPDA table allowing just 6.62 passes before a defensive action but they also have the highest challenge intensity which measures how many defensive actions a team is doing per minute of the opponent ball possession. This reflects how often the team is actively trying to recover the ball when the opponent is in possession. And that there are the key principles that we're trying to replicate from Marcelo Gachado in Football Manager so now let's go and create that tactic. Welcome back and in this part we're going to create the tactic but first we're going to look at the strengths of a 4-1-3-2. In the 4-1-3-2 the anchor man shields the back four, the shape promotes a numerical superiority in the central areas, the two wide central midfielders can help protect the fullbacks not leaving them isolated, a number 10 links the midfield to attack and operates in the zone 14, lastly against the four at the back formation the two strikers can go 1v1 with the central defenders. So in this tactic we're going to try and utilise those key strengths and now let's build that tactic. So for the mentality we're going to use positives just so we can be wary for the opponent's counter attacks and what we're trying to do is minimise that risk of being caught on the counter attack. In possession for the attacking whip we're going to set to fairly narrow just so we can funnel our play in the central areas and create those numerical superiorities in the central zones. We're also going to play out from the defence which is of course key and we're going to focus play through the middle just so we can get those overloads in the central areas. For the passing directness we're going to leave on slightly shorter but for the tempo we've set that to higher just so we can move the ball about in a quicker fashion but also we can unsettle the opponents. And in the final third we're going to work the ball into the box. In transition when the possession has been lost we are going to counter press, squeeze and pressure the opponents as soon as we lose the ball. When the possession has been won we're going to make our counter movements, exploit any gaps left by the opponents. When the goalkeeper's in possession of the ball he's just going to distribute the ball to the centre backs or the full backs and roll it out. For out of possession and just because we're trying to replicate some of the key principles from Marcelo Gachado he presses really really high and that's exactly what we're going to do so a higher defensive line, a much higher line of engagement but the defensive width is also set the opponents out wide again trying to replicate that Marcelo Gachado tactical principle. For the trigger press set to much more often and we're also going to prevent that short goalkeeper distribution. Now for the player roles in goal we are using a sweeper keeper on a supportive duty. At the back is two ball playing defenders and both of them will be instructed to pass it shorter and tackle harder of course. At the moment we cannot press shorter passing so what we have to do is go back to the team instructions, pass and direct directness, set it to slightly more direct, go back to the player, go to shorter passing, press ok and then go back to your team instruction and press slightly shorter. Out wide we're using two full backs instead of wing backs, at first I did use wing 
backs but that just left a big space and the opponents were getting in behind our wing back far too easily so we are using a full back on support and both of them are instructed to cross from the byline and tackle harder. For our holding midfielder we're not using an anchor man or a defensive midfielder on defend in fact we're using a defensive midfielder on support and the only instruction that he has is to hold his position he's not roaming around he's not going to swap positions with anybody else he's just going to focus on holding his position in the middle of the park. Now this is where things get a bit more interesting in the midfield we have two Mazalas both of them on attack and in between them we have a central midfielder again somebody on attack so you can see in central midfield we're really going for it we're really focusing in those central areas the two Mazalas they will be asked to dribble more in that half space and tackle harder whilst the central midfielder he's just instructed to shoot less often but also tackle harder so so you can see that our attack is very very intense in the central areas lastly up top we do have a full nine dropping deep and connecting play and his strike partner is an advanced forward and the advanced forward will be tackling harder and taking more risk the two strikers in the system score a lot of goals so make sure you have some very good strikers in your system and then this tactic will be played at i don't know full effect <laughs> you will score a lot of goals which we'll see now with the results so that's the tactical wrapped up we're gonna play a game actually just to see how the tactic plays out and then after that we're gonna look at the results so let's get stuck into that game So here we are at match day, Nottingham Forest versus Millwall in the Skybet Championship. So far we've played 8, we've won 8. Where are Millwall? Millwall are 14th, they played 8. They've won 2, drawn 3 and lost 3. So we should win this game. We should win this game. Let's get stuck into it. So for the team talk, I'm just going to tell them I expect to win. And then I'm trying to motivate the defenders, midfielders and attackers. Let's kick off. Here's Low with a throw in now. Ghana, Low, Yates with the ball. Cafu, not that Cafu. And the shot is blocked. Here's Ojo now. Mill on a break here. Oh, he's been taken down. He has been taken down by Jordi Osetutu. Ghana with the ball into the box. Oh, it's a goal. Joel Rowell. Not on the forest one. Mill will nil. Inside the first three minutes. Incredible start here by Not on the forest. It's a far post cross. It's a simple goal. It's a simple header. They should have done better Millwall. Oh, maybe they're going to equalise right away. Is it going to be an instant reply? I hate those on Football Manager. Absolutely hate those. Here's Hutchison. Oh, Lewis Grabbin wins the ball. Come on. Make it two, son. He's chipped the keeper. Oh, it's off the line. Drama inside the first five minutes. I mean, we've just scored and had the shot off the line. Here's Ferguson with a free kick. Deep free kick from Millwall. Hopefully, we put pressure on them. Oh, that's poor by Lowe. McKenna, great interception there. Here's Cafu. He plays it through to Taylor. Oh, we've got to be scoring that. We've missed two one-on-ones now. We've got to be doing better in front of goal. Here's Ose a 2-2 now. Yates, Garner. He puts the ball into the box, but Hutchison gets it out for Millwall. Go on, Samba. <laughs> Go on, boy. There's Lowe. Cafu now. McKenna. Lowe again. Lewis grabbing Yates, put the ball into the central areas. Oh, unlucky, son. Unlucky. Here's Ojo for Millwall now. He's driving. Malone. Ojo. Hopefully, they don't score from this. Mason and Samba gathers the ball. Simple save. Here's Low now for Nottingham Forest. McKenna. Here's Garner now. Yates. Taylor. Out to 2 2. Is he going to put the ball into the box? He gets to the byline. Lewis grab him and it's two for Nottingham Forest. Plenty of bodies inside the box. Exactly what we want. So here you can see Taylor. He puts the ball out to Osea Tutu because like we said in the analysis, the fullbacks are going to be free a lot of the times. He puts the ball into the box. Grab him beats. Who is that in the air? Ferguson. And it's 2-0 to Forest. Here's Garner now with a free kick. Taylor at the back post. He's missed again. It is offside, but he's missed another easy chance in front of goal. He hasn't got his shooting boots on, clearly. Here's Lowe, Samba now, Worrell, McKenna. Forrest are really starting to stump their authority on the game now. Here's Tutu, or Jada in that half space. He looks for Graben. Is he going to... Oh. Our heading is better, is better than the shooting at the moment. Here's Joe Garner. Here's Ojeda, Garner now. McKenna, is he going to play the ball out wide? He 
couldn't get the ball out wide to the spare full back there. But here's Taylor now, Ojeda. Oh, what's going on, ref? How was that a highlight? So it's 2 0 at half time. For some reason, that was a highlight. Let's get the boys in at half time and let's tell them we want more. We want more. And what you can do from here as well for the second half, I could just get James Garner, put him on defence because I'm guessing now Millwall are going to come out fighting. Let's get back to that dressing room and start that second half. Here's Taylor on the ball now, low. Cafu, grabbing. He looks for the ball inside, but Yates doesn't get in behind. Oh. Why do they keep showing us those little rubbish highlights? Here's Hutchison with a free kick, Savile, a full beat. Oh, Joe, I mean, why are we not reacting? Why is he not reacting there? You can see as well just how much we are using that central area. It's absolutely crazy, this heat map here. Here's Garner on the ball now, free kick. He shoots, he's hit the bar. He's hit the bar and grabbing is offside. We are approaching the last 20 minutes of the game. Here's Malone. He puts the ball in, but we get the ball out. Grab and picks up the ball now. Referee, Jesus, pieces. Jesus, referee. Now they've got a man down. I mean, we could just take that player off to the defensive duty now. Here's Garner on the ball. Yates, Cafu. Garner, he finds Ojeda. Oh, he's hit the pole. What is going on with our shooting? We literally should have scored four or five goals. McKenna on the ball now. Cafu again finds Grabben making that run into the channel. Taylor, we've hit the post again. I don't believe this. <laughs> it's getting a bit ridiculous now. Wow, what was that, Cafu? Getting a little bit ridiculous now. How many times have we actually hit the woodwork? Three times. Here's Worrell. Here's Yates on the ball now. He's looking for a Jada, but doesn't get the ball into him. Here's Cafu now. Cafu. Here's Low. Max Low. Is he going to drive down the byline? He almost does. Penny. No. Yates and a good header. Here's Garner now with the corner. Where's he going to put the ball in? It bounces off Worrell. And it is a goal kick to Millwall. We are approaching the last few minutes of this game now. But here's a Jada. 2 2 on the ball. What's he going to do down his right flank? Here's Garner. Cafu. Nice interchange, nice play there. Oh, why do they keep showing us these dead highlights? Oh my God. Yates, Ojeda. Also 2-2. Two -two. He's driving down the byline, and gets the ball into the box. Lewis grab him. Nah, ugh. Our finishing has been awful. We could have won this game around 3-4-0. We've missed three one-on-ones, three good chances from our strikers. They didn't get the ball in the back of the net once today, but... The game ends 2 0. Actually, Lewis Grabham scored. What am I talking about? But the game ends 2 0 to Nottingham Forest. Now, let's look at the results. So welcome back. Now it's time to look at the results. And as you can see, Nottingham Forest were the champions. We played 46. We won 38 of those 46 games. We only lost two. Those two losses came away to Bournemouth and away to Cardiff. Our draws five of the six draws again away from home so when you are playing away from home maybe you can tweak something but you can see for the top goal scorer in the championship Lewis Grabben with 27 goals Lyle Taylor with 25 so we do have the top two as the top goal scorers for the average rating Joe Wall the centre back Lyle Taylor the striker the false nine and Lewis Grabben the advanced forward for the assists we have Jordi Usu 2-2 with 14 assists Jack Colback on 12 and for the most man of the match awards we have Lyle Taylor on 8 Looking at the team stats, we have the most points per game, of course we do, we have scored the most goals, 113, the most shots for, fewer shots against, but when it comes to the pass completion, we are in 8th, and for the average possession, we are in 3rd place with 56%, so still not bad in possession. For most tackles won, we are in 4th place, for the most dribbles made, not in the top 8, for the most clean sheets, we come in 4th, and for the fewest conceded, we are top with 36 so we do have the best defence in the league and we've also scored the most goals as well. Looking at the past map from the most recent game against Hull City away from home, you can see some nice diamonds forming. So we have the left centre back here, the left back, the left side of central midfielder and the anchor man, the holding midfielder and it's similar on the right hand side as well. And then we have attacking triangles between the striker, the central midfielder and the Mazala. Again, the same on the opposite side. Looking at the general performance, we scored 2.46 goals per game with an expected goals per game of 2.10. We conceded 0.78 goals per game, but we did have an expected goals against per game at one. So something defensively can be tweaked most certainly. 
Looking at the attacking efficiency, we were aggressive and clinical with our shooting. Defensively, we were quiet and impenetrable, but like we just saw as well, we can tweak something, especially for those away games because we are giving away too much of an high XG. And for the possession, you can see that we frequently won the ball and we were just about reliable in possession. Well, basically the only team that frequently won the ball and was reliable in possession as well. So that's the data hub. Now we can look at the squad stats. Who were the top goal scorers in all competitions? Lau Taylor actually scored 28 goals in 35 games. Lewis Graben scored 28 goals in 34 games. James Garner on loan for Manchester United scored 11. Ryan Yates, the central midfielder, scored nine. And Philip Zikum, Zikumag, Zikumnagu? God knows, but he also scored nine goals. For the most assists, we have OC22 here with 14. Jack Colback also on 14. Cafu on 11. Brian Ojeda on 10. And Brennan Johnson on 10 as well. Now, this tactic wasn't only tested with Nottingham Forest, we also did it with River Plate, but we're gonna look at the results at River Plate very, very briefly. And the reason why we're gonna look at this briefly is because, well, we've only played 24 games. I have no idea how this league actually works. It just felt like we was playing games after games. After, it felt like it was going on forever, basically. But Julian Alvarez scored 15 goals in 24 games. Our central midfielder, Palavcino, also scored 14 goals in the league. He's a central midfielder. And for this trophy here, I'm not exactly sure what well, it is it's a copper sudamericana <laughs> but we also won that so we've won the trophy we're also currently on top of the league as well if we look at how many goals we've scored we have scored 74 goals at river plate so at the moment we do have a higher goals per game at 3.08 and we are expected 2.33 at River Plate. But unfortunately, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. My name is RDF. If you are enjoying this type of content, make sure you are subscribed, like the video, share, leave a comment. All of that good stuff is only going to help the channel. But I'll see you guys soon. Shout out to my Patreons. God bless and stay safe.